So this one is they use a not really difficult tech techniques, but in a really smooth and serious way to present what should be played seriously. So you can see all those cards, they are like the, the, the solid, the, the tangible archives. You can choose whatever clips they want to see, like someone's live, and you just put it on the installation. This kind of uh, interactive device will sense that, and you can just use the scroller to scroll all the digital archives of these people. This is so moving. So moving. Yeah. I was shocked when I first time uh, when I firstly uh, have a look of this one because I think it's a really talented way making use of the digital form to 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 show what should be shown what should be shown uh, seriously. So as we all know, this history is something that we want to uh, take it like. Uh, in a respect way, so it's pretty clean. It was pretty neat. It, it can pre present to any anyone who visited in this uh, museum, and it's not like showing off of how good we are in these techniques. It's a perfect combination of art and uh, history and uh, technology. So with the digital form, these archives. Could be uh, could be managed in the perfect layout, like uh, the the picture part and the uh, text part, and uh, also you have unlimited space to add on more text or more archives, and it has no limits, like uh, the library or something. All you need is is one more clip, and you can go here you go, and you can have more and more archives of this one. So I think this would be an example, a good example uh, to uh, illustrate what is a good example, uh, what is the good work uh, of the combination of art and tech. This is the the, the, the first one that pop, <laughs> just popped in my mind. It's so moving, like even though we're just watching it through a screen. So did you first see it in person or also just on the screen? Also on the screen, and so uh, last year I get in touch with Pan Generator. Uh, I, I get in touch with the, uh, the the member of them, and they visited China. So uh, they did some collaboration with the output agency this year in Shenzhen. Wow! How how so, was how was meeting them in person? Yeah, they are really creative. <laughs> like like want to. They want to uh, just spend every minute to talk about possibilities, to talk about what should be done uh, in this new place. They are really interesting in doing things in China. I think that China has a lot of possibilities and people uh, have this kind of um, interesting ideas towards techni techniques and people here are full of imagination. So uh, I think months ago they just finished a, uh, a, a collaboration, a collaborative project in Shenzhen, in Shenzhen Airport. It was a data analysis-based uh, interactive installation. Um, but I, I mean, if you come to <laughs> Shenzhen Airport someday, it was a permanent one, uh, founded by uh, Tencent. The the maybe the biggest internet company in China founded by Tencent. Uh, so it will be, I think they would have following project in China later. I think I see it actually. It's called Shimmering Pulse. Exactly. Shenzhen Maidong. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Okay, we'll attach the link underneath. That's it for this episode of Beyond Codes and Aesthetics. If you like what you heard, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts 
Spotify, or wherever else you listen to your podcasts. Also, please take a moment to rate and review this podcast. It will help other listeners discover what we're doing. Beyond Codes and Aesthetics is produced by Kohei and translations on Himalaya podcasts by Will Jung. Take care and see you next time.